you can kind of get pretty close to Mickey. And uh, Donald's tough, you know, you... That's about all I can do. And but the worst, whoop, uh, Goofy was right in the wheelhouse. <laughs> you know, I can do that. And uh, they had me record a little bit off of a tape and uh, and send it in. And about a month later, you know, uh, they said, "Hey, they want to use you as Goofy." And I, oh, that's great. I didn't know how big it is, but I knew, hey, that's cool. You know, and you don't know if it's, they don't sign you up to this lifelong contract. It's like for one thing. And so in January of 87, I got to do a show called uh, Disney's Doggone Valentine. And it was these old DTV clips, you know, and they have music to it and a little interstitial. So it was actually looping to some existing footage of Goofy. And I've never done that before. I went to this studio and uh, I was so green. I met the guy who does Donald Duck, Tony and Selmo, who is also an animator. And has the distinction of being one of the only people that has ever animated his own character. And he was sitting there drawing Donald. And, uh, uh, you know, this, and I thought to myself, well, we don't have to draw these guys. <laughs> I really, I, but anyway, I got through this session okay. And... Uh, then they called me again in a month or so, and then again and again and again, and right now it's about 3,500 times they've called me and done different projects for Disney, and of course, that's why I'm here, I guess. <laughs> that's kind of the long version, I guess. So, I figure Goofy has a slumping kind of posture, and and so then they'll got engineers to come in and move the mic down a little bit and stuff like that. You just have to, the physicality uh, is just part of the personality, and that's what you're trying to get. Trick voices, if you will, because they're a different part of your throat. If you can kind of get up in that falsetto, you're kind of already in the ballpark for Mickey, however you do the accent or whatever. Goofy's kind of a cadence character. In other words, he's got a lot of ups and downs and kind of got that rural feel. And uh, it's a different style of voice, and it's one of the hardest ones to uh, match around the world. They got like... You know, they have a whole division at Disney that does nothing but translates everything in about 42 languages. Last year, so, kind of uh, open your throat and kind of close up the back of your nose. And it's kind of got an up and down thing, too. And uh, so it's kind of placed there. So you first do a tone, like, that's kind of where Kermit sounds. And that's where his voice emanates from. <laughs> and so if you can do that tone, you can just kind of talk around that and keep your uh, throat and everything feeling the same, and you're probably going to be somewhat in the ballpark, you know. <laughs> or let's say you take another voice, uh, Christopher Lloyd, if you're going to do that. Christopher Lloyd! <laughs> Hockey talk! You know, his tone would probably be, oh, it's like him just doing that. Sounds, you know, if you can get that, you don't even have to say any words, and you're kind of getting the character. And so you can do that tone, oh, and then you start talking, and then you kind of figure out where the tongue goes and where all of the hits are on the voice, and, and how he emphasizes certain things. So you do the tone, and then you add the variations in the way he speaks to it, and you got yourself an impression. It's the loudest thing I do. And I always have to tell the engineer, if it's a new engineer, uh, okay, this is going to be really loud. And, okay, you know, they'll back it off a little bit. And then I do it, and then he goes, geez, you know, okay, now I'll really turn it back. But it's uh, usually like, you got to hit the first note just right, or it doesn't work, and you got to go, 